Get back on the road. Back, I said. It's not you that's going to die. It's this kid, you hear? It's this kid and 30 like him. So 1958's Violent Playground is one of those great hidden gems um, directed by forgotten filmmaker Basil Dearden and starring Stanley Baker, Peter Cushing and David McCallum. It's essentially the UK's answer to films like Rebel Without a Cause and Blackboard Jungle. Um, and due to a final act featuring a gun siege in a primary school, it doesn't really get shown much these days. Now that's a big shame because it's an amazing snapshot of post-war England, uh, Liverpool to be exact, and the fear that rock and roll music was literally hypnotising the country's youth into disruption and violence. Let's take a look. So crime drama Violent Playground features a Liverpool part-time policeman and newly appointed juvenile liaison officer, Sergeant Truman, um, here played by the great Stanley Baker. Uh, now, Truman isn't happy about his new position, uh, babysitting the city's kids, um, as he really wants to be involved in the nitty-gritty police work, specifically the arson case that's laying waste to local buildings. So, about this firefly... Get your fires and your crooks and your murderers. And spend your time seeing that the children of this city grow up a little less antisocial than some of their elders. Sir, I know, I know it's important, but well, I don't even like kids. Now, what he doesn't expect is to soon come into contact with Johnny, uh, played by David McCallum, uh, the leader of a local gang and a dangerous arsonist with a past. Not only that, but he'll also fall for Johnny's sister, Kathy, played by Anne Haywood. Now, Violent Playground's interesting in that it evolves from social message movie to romance movie to hostage siege movie uh, so effortlessly that it doesn't really feel like it's 150 minute runtime. It's gritty performances and Dearden's direction keep things moving and it never feels overly preachy. So to understand where this film's coming from, you really need to understand the kind of quote unquote teen movie and how it came of age in 50s America. And that was not long after the concept of the teenager was born itself in the 40s. That odd stage between childhood and adulthood, uh, complete with its own awkward characteristics, was still a relatively recent concept um, and really became actualised in cinema and wider culture when, in the early 50s, a, a lost and angry Marlon Brando answered, what are you rebelling against with? What do you got? Now, I'm sure there's an entire other video's worth of discussion around the changing social attitudes and post-war economy and how they fed into the emergence of teenagers, uh, young people finding themselves with more money and more free time. Um, however, this freedom also brought with it rebellion, angst and young love slash doomed romance uh, was something filmmakers quickly cashed in on. But back to this movie, uh, Stanley Baker here in one of his quintessential performances really, um, initially gets involved with a couple of youngsters who skip school to pull off mini cons on shopkeepers. Um, shout out here to the actors playing the children because they both do great work for their age. Uh, when does your father get back from work then? In time for Christmas. He's a stoker. He's on the China run. I see. But, but, but who looks after you? I look after Patrick as best I can, Sergeant. I'm 13 minutes older. Now this in turn leads Baker to their older sister, Kathy, uh, played here well by Anne Haywood, um, and also to their older brother, played by David McCallum, who gets a chance to flex his acting muscles going from crazy rebel teenager to tragic figure. People are always giving me that stuff. Why don't I be a good boy? Why don't I work hard? Why don't I join the Boy Scouts? I'll tell you why. Because I'm Johnny Murphy, that's why. <laughs> I wonder who Johnny Murphy really is. Are you nuts or something? <laughs> Always up us. Come on. Now, there are two subplots in the movie, uh, one involving McCallum's past and his relationship to the church, uh, with the great Peter Cushing playing a priest whose preaching mostly falls on the deaf ears of the modern youths he once had the attention of, um, perhaps rock and roll culture presumably replacing organised religion. Maybe. No, but I'm not saying that we're better or greater or comparing us with Jesus Christ as a person or God as a thing or whatever it is. And the other involves a romantic element between Baker and Haywood's character that doesn't really amount to anything and would have benefited the film if it was left out, in all honesty. Uh, Haywood's fine in it. She's lovely, of course, but I don't think she had the career she probably deserved. I mean, in all honesty, I've only ever seen her in this where she has an Irish accent and in the previous year's Dangerous Exiles when she had a Welsh accent. Now, Violet Play was directed by British filmmaker Basil Dearden, who also made the Blue Lamp um, cartoon and the underrated Assassination Bureau. 
And one of the great aspects of the film was that it was shot in Gerard Gardens in Liverpool. Um, now, I could be wrong, but incidentally, I'm not sure I actually heard one Liverpudlian accent in the entire film. Um, but besides that, its location works great. Um, I'm not sure how accurate it was for the time, but it paints Gerard Gardens as an almost uh, boiling pot of families cramped in and kids running amok and gangs of youths ruling the roost. Um, the estate was actually demolished in the late 80s, so the film's a nice time capsule um, of that kind of social housing that I suppose was once state-of-the-art, uh, but now with its monolithic, brutalist design seems like a pretty scary environment. Violent Playground also features some interesting, for the time anyway, ethnic roles, um, including Michael Chow and Shai Chin as laundry delivery workers that play a pivotal role in the arsonist side of the film's plot. Um, they're treated terribly, of course, with the level of 1950s casual racism being uncomfortably on full display. So with this mixture of social drama, uh, religious guilt, teenage rebellion um, and violent crime involving arson attacks and machine gun hostage situations, Violent Playground certainly deserves revisiting and some reappraisal. Now, certainly after the events of March 1996, when uh, Dunblane Primary School became the site of the deadliest mass shooting in British history, uh, when an unhinged individual shot and killed 16 children and their teacher, uh, any film showing young children held at gunpoint in a classroom could possibly leave a bad taste in the mouth. Obviously, this being the late 50s, we are spared any such bloody violence, but instead we get a tour de force performance in the last third of the film from the young man who'd go on to do great TV work in The Man From Uncle, uh, Cold It's and Sapphire and Steel. 1958's Violent Playground. Go check it out. Where's the sergeant? Oh, oh, oh. 